for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today. If you follow my channel, you may know by now that I try to do a full breakdown video every single month. Uh, this one here is probably going to take place of the one for February. I didn't put one out in December at all, so that's why I'm doing a double drop this month. I already put out an offense a couple weeks ago. I put out my one of my favorite offenses, the Ravens offense. I'll try to have links in the description for that if you guys didn't see that. Other than that, today's is about the multi-D defense, which is one of the meta defensive playbooks to use in Madden 23. It's one of the ones I use the most in my gameplay. These are probably my backup favorite playbooks. The Baltimore Ravens offense and the multi-D uh, defense are probably my two favorite alternate playbooks to use outside of my New Orleans Saints and my Denver Broncos. As always, though, if you guys want me to continue this series, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the video. And also make sure that I know to keep doing this video. Uh, but other than that, uh, let me know in the comment section what offense or defense you'd like to see next month if I pull one out in February, which I'm not 100% sure if I will or not. But uh, it's something, like I said, I want to do a double drop because I did miss last month. Other than that, this is also a Woo! preview of what my ebooks look like. Not every play from my ebooks is in this video, but the majority of them are. So for people that don't buy my ebooks, this is a good way to get a free uh, defense to to run uh, whether you're playing in the league or you're playing online or whatever you're playing in these are some really great plays to run so if you want me to continue hit the like button and if you want me to put out your favorite playbook next let me know in the comment section other than that let's go and get right into the video next up out of the three four odd we have the cover three sky same step as the cover two we're just going to baseline show blitz then we're going to blitz all which is d-pad to the left and down the right stick then we're going to basically choose the a route to drop back in a vertical hook and we're going to guess pass. This is all we're really going to do. And then I'm going to drop back over the receivers on the left side to cover short. And you can see we get an instant sack because I put my fastest linebacker there this time. Going to the replay, this is the exact same blitz as the cover two. It's still a five on five. You can see we have a free guy running in. And we have a, I think it's the right guard there blocking absolutely nobody because of the way they switch off. Uh, this is really all you want. I mean, like I said, a faster linebacker gets much quicker and much easier heat coming around the edge than whoever I had running that last time. Next up, we have the cover four drop. So cover four, pretty much the exact same setup as most things in this formation. Um, although, you know, sometimes when you do that second base align, you will have this guy walking back out. I kind of want him in. If it's run defense, I want him in. And then I'm going to go underneath a lot of times because hard flats set to zero or better for outside run contain. Um, and then, like I said, if it's an inside run, although there the ball just kind of started, I didn't even, I wasn't even ready. But you can see it shut the defense down without having the full setup. Although that really was kind of the full setup. The only thing I was going to do and I was going to say was if you think it's an inside run, you can pinch the defense again. Like I said, if it's if you have a receiver here, though, I typically want to walk him back. I don't want to have him down in the box getting whooped. This is a pretty good pass defense. It is. But at the end of the day, um, you know, this is this is the run defense here. And now you can see, I mean, this is just, this is as good a run defense as you're going to get in this game. As you can see, outside runs get nothing. Inside runs going to be the exact same way. It's going to be very similar to the cover four quarters. We'll do the exact same thing with the goal line defense, although it's really the setup that makes it happen. So it's going to be the exact same as the cover four quarters that I showed before. Exact same setup. I'm, you know, base in line, show blitz base in line, and I'm pinching the defense, hard flatting. Um, like I said, if I think it's going to be, a QB. I always come down for the QB sneak because this is the one that's a little bit easier to get uh, because there's not a lot of lane there. You can see his knee touched the ground before it got over, so that's that's really to me how you stop the QB sneak. Works the same with the fullback dive. So we'll do the fullback dive. This is probably the second best play. But this is definitely a great goal line defense. I, gotta, I have tons of highlights of shutting people down with this. Although as I almost jumped off sides there. But like I said, I'm just going to come down over this gap so the QB sneak doesn't work. And then you'll see on the other side, typically the um, you know the fullback dive can get shut down there. You probably would have got that there on the one yard line. Although you did see the defensive tackle. He just shut the defensive tackle. Like the defensive tackle got in to make the play. And he's like a 350 pound defensive tackle. That's Christian Wilkins. You would think that he would tackle this guy a yard deep. So the defense worked, even though he just walked right through it, which, come on, man, look at this. Look at this animation. He's just throwing off a 350-pound run-stopping defensive lineman like that. Come on, bro. Johnny Smith is not that hardcore. But like I said, the run defense worked to perfection. He got it. He caught him a yard deep, which is really what I want. Next up, we have the cover four quarters. So I'm going to base it, show blitz. So I'm going to base in line, show blitz, base in line, which you can see dropped everybody uh, down but the cornerbacks. I don't want the cornerbacks to drop down. 
Then I'm going to um, pinch my defense, which is going to be R1, RB, and then down the left stick. This is going to make a really good, um, you know, outside run defense. You can see the one cornerback where there's no receiver drops, but the one where there is a receiver stays back. That's what I want. So the cornerbacks are, are you know, they won't get burned on the pass. And then these um, these safeties are down the box to a point where they're really going to make an impact. You can see it's like nine in the box plus. It's like ten in the box right now. So if I think it's going to be an outside run, I can move them outside a little bit. If I think it's going to be an inside run, I can move them inside a little bit. Um, since my cornerback's outside over there, I could, I'd probably even just like cheat him over because I feel that cornerback's going to hold that spot down. Then, um, you know, like I said, I'll typically, because this is also a pretty good pass defense I, and not really a blitz, I'll typically use her, um, this linebacker here because he's on a blitz and I don't really want to blitzing anyway. Uh, now just give me an additional middle zone coverage if it is a pass. So this is going to be my user. Do not guess pass though unless you're 100% sure that your opponent is passing. Like it's a third and long or something like that. Because if you guess pass, the safeties won't benefit the run anymore like they will now. So here you can see it looks like it's an outside run. That dude cut him off, but he cut back inside. So he did get a couple yards, which is more than typical. But I want to go to the replay uh, real quick. Because you can see that um, the safeties walk down if you're watching the safeties they don't drop back most defenses they drop back and cover fours they do with this guy dead right here i probably should have had him in the middle might have been able to make a play if i had him in the middle maybe i moved him out of the way but you can see he walks down and immediately looking to fill the run which is something that makes cover four superior run defense the safety actually ends up making the play the safety over here uh who plays a little more hesitantly because he's really that's probably his job it's probably his contained job and he he comes in and makes the play at the last second so this here i mean then you can see the cornerbacks too the cornerbacks are out here running um you know they don't get beat you know what i mean like that's that's the benefit of this they're, they're not gonna they're gonna play their guys they're out here basically um you know covering the receivers all the way through the play so baseline show blitz baseline again i said that's to drop the corner the safety's down the cornerback's back that's the most important part then if i pinch my defense you can see we're not giving up any inside run lanes. Now here, these guys are coming down to a press. I don't really want that. So that pinching part, I really only save that pinching part if it's like a fourth and inches or you know they're on the goal line at the one or something like that. I don't really pinch my defense because of the cornerbacks dropping down like this when I have the full length of the field to cover. Because if you have a really speedy receiver, you could beat that press and have a touchdown. So I really only save that press for when um, you know when I need it, I should say. The last step is I typically like to put these uh, linebackers on hard flat too, which I really didn't do on the last play. And I typically set them to zero um, so that they can really, it's just for outside contain purposes. I'll do a better job outside containing. You see, we get a very instant stop for a no yard gain. So this here is definitely a very good run defense, but it's also a good pass defense. I'll show it against a goal line to show you that pinch really does work. This is a very good goal line defense. Let's go, let's go with the sneak. Like I said, we're doing that exact same setup. This time, if I mean, if I really expect a goal line run or like a QB sneak, a lot of times I'll blitz all. But I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to basically do it just like this. I'll typically come over the gap, try to shoot this gap. But you're going to see how it's just, it's very hard to get that yard. I mean, I don't know if you got it or not. If I am running on the goal line and I think my opponent might pass, I definitely want to do an underneath coverage. Sometimes you can blitz all linebackers. Like I said, I typically guard, I'll typically guard the, the, the this over the fullback dive. And you can see it'll, it'll have an effect there. He might have got it. I don't really know. But he got stood up and knocked back. So it's really hard to say. But at the end of the day, there is additional setups when it comes to goal line. This is definitely my goal line play. Um, and if, I, if I'm expecting uh, a QB sneak, this is pretty much how I'm going to handle it. If I'm expecting a QB sneak, I'll hit run up the middle. You know what I'm saying? It, it, this, this is this is all out uh, pressure. You can see right there, he definitely did not get it that time. So run up the middle for goal line for goal lines. Uh, QB sneak would be would make the most sense. But there's a lot of different things you can do here with this particular play. Like I said, if I think it's QB sneak, I'll come down over here. Even if it's if it's a fullback. As you can see, his knee's hitting the ground, so I don't think he's actually getting that yard or that inch. We'll try it against fullback dive, and I'll do the exact same setup. Like I said, exact same setup. I'm going to come down. I'm still going to come down over this spot because that linebacker will fill. 
that linebacker will fill that spot. You can see the, the goal line shut down. You know what I mean? I don't have to be on the fullback side. It's definitely best to run commit in this scenario, but you can see there's no real opportunity in these short yardage runs. I'm not going to run commit here, and you can see we still get that stop. That was not a run commit. You can tell by the cornerbacks not committing to the play. We'll go to the replay here just to prove that I, I did not run commit because the cornerbacks are dropping back. If it was a run commit, they wouldn't have dropped back. Next up, we have the pinch buck zero. So this player, all I'm going to do is, you know, guess pass, blitz my user, bring him down over the gap. I can slant my defensive line outside, which for whatever reason I have to do twice for it to actually take effect. That would be the only thing that I would say to do. Otherwise, the running back is my responsibility, but if it's a play action, I'm just going to drop back on either one of these tight ends over the middle. You can see we get that instant pressure once again uh, due to the play action. This is something that, you know, there's a lot of man blitzes right now in Madden. Um, it's really just about overloading the line. I think that uh, I get an advantage here. Somebody's going to come in free just based off of me being in the hole. And then, like I said, I just pull back really quick and uh, we're going to get some pressure. So this is just something you can mix in. I don't run a lot of man zero blitzes, but this is definitely a good option if you do like to run man zero blitzes. Next up, we have the Saul Blitz one. Typically, I just want to line and then I want to bring my, uh, my blitzer down over one of these gaps. This is something that, you know, it's not an, a, a, an insane blitz, but it's a good cover one. As you can see, we still get a guy coming off the edge free. The offense has six blockers and I'm only sending five. It looks like I'm sending six because at first I do press and release from the guard uh, to, before I get back into coverage. But you can see the tight end's blocking nobody. And when I pull away from the guard, he's also blocking nobody. So 81's blocking nobody. And 61, or I'm sorry, 71 over here is blocking absolutely nobody. Um, so there's four guys getting blocked, one guy coming in free against a six-man pressure. Like I said, all I'm doing, putting my guy on a blitz, coming down this gap. I can slant my my defensive ends outside, my line, my outside or my uh, my line outside if I want to. But guessing pass and coming down this gap is the most important part. Then I just basically press and release. Just press, come back. You can see, boom, we get a free rusher, and once again, the tight end is setting one to block and no one. Next up out of 3-4, we have the Tampa 2. So this blitz is going to be a five-man blitz. All I'm going to do is baseline and show blitz. You can really do this from just about any setting or any play in this particular playbook. Then I'm going to blitz all. I'm going to hit my my, my uh, linebacker assignments, which is D-pad to the right and down. And then that's basically going to be my look. Then I'm going to basically pick any one of my defensive linemen, typically opposite wherever I am. So I'm going to hit my D-pad to the left twice. So I'm going to pick the A option and put down on the left stick for the vertical hook. Then I'm just going to basically guess pass because that's going to send anybody right after the quarterback if it's a play action or anything like that. And I'm going to drop back post snap. So we're only going to have five guys rushing here. Once this play is done, there's going to be five blockers. So I can basically just pull right back. You can see there's going to be somebody coming free. You get a lot of switch pressures there. That particular play didn't quite get the sack. But I'm going to go to the replay just to see what happens because we did have a couple of guys coming in free from time to time, which is kind of weird. Like you can see right here, we do get an A gap pressure because you can see how these guys just get like passed around until we get a free guy it was a little faster he would have been right in his ear the edge guy was coming in free as well as you can see he gets picked up at the last second by the rotating uh, tackle but you're going to get pressure from a lot of different areas with this blitz we'll do it one more time baseline show blitz blitz all guess pass put my defensive end on a vert hook so he can basically, I mean, if I want to have a linebacker there typically, but put my defensive end on a vert hook so he can give me a little bit of coverage. And then boom, you see how the guy gets looping in. And we're going to call that a sack because he came in free. Just got kind of a weird, um, I've noticed that this year, it's like they don't want this. This used to get like instant pressure, but I, I like that loop. Don't get me wrong. Like that's a good loop, but uh, I'd rather him come in straight for the quarterback. And I'm going to swap out a faster guy and he probably will. Next up, we got the Will Buck three press. This play here, all I'm going to do is the exact same thing I did with the cover one. Just put my user on a blitz, bring him down over the gap. Then I'm going to slant my defensive line outside and guess pass. That's all I really have to do. This uh, will pick me up, and then the, typically the, the linebacker will just come in right over the middle. Now you can see 77 ended that play blocking nobody. So watch this once again. I the, the pressure happens so fast that I don't actually get off the block very well. You can see I'm still kind of stuck on 71. He's about to get sacked. Maybe that's why. I probably fell asleep because I saw that guy coming in. But um, I do get off in time to block the running back, leaving 71 blocking nobody, and 77 really ends up blocking nobody. He's just kind of like waiting back here. But it's a very easy A gap, or maybe this is a B gap blitz, uh, based off the fact that the linebacker is just slightly behind. He uh, he really just gets um, he just gets an easy lane to the quarterback. So this is best for when the quarterback's under center. 
There, it was a completely different guy that got in. They, they, they picked it up differently, but the edge defender still got in. So let's watch the replay one more time. They said there, I actually tapped and got back way quicker. Like, that was the main difference. I think it was Melvin Ingram gets in this time. But you can see me, like, I actually get off my block way faster that time, which is important. So that there, 76, still blocking nobody. Tight end, still blocking nobody. And we have this dude coming in off the edge super quick. So you're going to get pressure in multiple ways with this particular play. Against shotgun, I find it's best to spread the defensive line. We're going to do that exact same setup. Like I said, if I want to, I can move Baker in here or I could just base a line. But, um, you know, base a line would also drop the cornerbacks back. So base a line and move him in. Then, like I said, I'm just going to come down this gap one more time. This here will work better. Spread against shotgun. You see there, boom, we get an instant sack. Although there, I kind of messed up. I don't know what happened to me on the block. So on this next play, I tried the loop. I didn't want to touch 71. I just wanted him to look at me, and then I wanted to run back. But somehow I got clotheslined by the dude next to me. That's a really cool animation, I'm guessing, that um, you know that, that, that Madden added. I don't really remember them reacting to other rush, rushers in such a cool way, so that's really cool. And then I also noticed that he like pancakes me, like sits on me, which was awesome. I don't remember that too much in previous years either. But either way, as far as that goes, he still ends up blocking nobody because the, the, the outside linebacker is in the quarterback's ear by the time that, I mean, he's blocking nobody once the once the outside linebacker gets in. Then the bluff blitz, let's see what the effect the bluff blitz had. You can see that that really helped to make sure that these two guys basically were, were contained. You know what I mean? Like the, the right tackle and the, and the tight end both kind of double teamed this guy because they thought he was coming in. So the bluff blitz was important and he still got back in time to kind of be helpful in coverage, although obviously not as good as if I would have left him out there. But you can't argue with the results because it was an instant blitz after the play action. I mean, the play action is meant to block and pick that up, but he just goes right around that and gets an instant sack. Except we have the LB Sting 1. Once again, run this opposite the running back. It's pretty much the same setup. I'm just going to, um, you know, pinch my defensive line, bring my user down the gap. I mean, I got to remember to drop back on that running back. Wherever the running back goes, I got to follow him. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if I really want to, I could use the, the safety, but that's a little bit... Uh, a little bit much. I don't know why they saved you so far down the box, too. That's kind of weird. But that's not my concern right now, because like I said, I'm just working on the blitz. You can see that dude just looped in right past the uh, the running back as nobody really recognized him. Go to the replay again. Like I said, he just kind of shoots right past, and there's two guys that really didn't look at him. Like I said, this is a pretty glitchy uh, loop blitz. Loop blitzes are the thing. You don't have to flip the play like I am. I just keep forgetting to flip the play. I don't know why this guy's doing that. Hold on. Might have messed that up. But, uh, but yeah. So you don't have to flip the play. I just keep forgetting to flip the play pre-snap when I call the play. This is part of the problem. Like I said, I just stay on for half a second. And boom. Just coming right around for an easy sack. Next up, we'll choose the Sam Edge 3. So I'm just going to pinch the defense, keep it contained. Bring the user down over the center. And guess pass. That's all I really got to do. We're going to get another looping pressure. Although you can see there, got a little bit of switch pressure as we get the defensive tackle right through. Jordan Davis. Watch the instant replay. Like I said, it looks like, you know, I don't know if that was, it looks like he just shedded. But you can see if the running back wasn't blocking, the blitzer would have got around the edge anyway. Next up, we'll choose the Sam Edge 3. So I'm going to pinch the defensive line, then I'm going to slant them outside. Then I'm going to, actually I already did it wrong. I'm going to make sure the, the blitzing guy is always coming off the opposite side of the running back. So i got to flip the play. I always want to make the blitzer come the opposite way. Then I'm going to pinch the defense. I'm going to um, slant them outside, bring this guy down to the gap, and then QB contain. That's all I'm really going to do. And you're going to see how this is going to create a lot of pressure. Uh, from a couple of different areas. Like I said, this will give you a lot of switch pressure. You can see the blitzing uh, outside linebacker is the one that comes in and gets the sack. That's the most obvious uh, player that's going to get it, but a lot of times you'll get switch pressure inside. Uh, then you can see here, I mean, I don't know what happened. It just took him a while to get around um, his own lineman. But the, the running back there, by the time, I mean, if, if he would have got through a little quicker, the running back might have picked him up. But based on the fact that 91 got through, it's, you know, there's nobody to pick him up. You don't have to do the QB contain. That's optional. I'm going to do it this time without it. You can see he just comes, he still rushes straight around and still makes the play. So the QB contain is not necessarily part of what makes it work. Go to the replay one more time. You can see the running back didn't even see him. He just comes around, does get chipped by the receiver for some reason. 
But, uh, but yeah, that's the play. Next up, we got to come for quarters. So this play here, just basically gonna gonna pinch the entire line. If I can bring these safety down, it's really gonna be best because that's really where the run defense comes from here. But we do have a good, uh, you know, inside alignment's pretty much locked up. Outside line is pretty much locked up, and this is a pretty good uh, run defense no matter what you're looking at. You can pinch and then spread linebackers, but I find it's best to just bring everybody down and in. Like I said, if you leave this guy out here, I mean, on a formation like this, it doesn't make sense, but he's a good second level defender here. If you think it could be an outside run, you can always carry him out. Like if it's a, if like there's a stretch possibility this side, you can just bring him out here, and you can see you got four defensive linemen inside, or and two, you know, two wide outside linemen on the outside and then the safeties can help fill the run lanes on the inside so right here we can basically pinch spread these linebackers hard flat like i said the second level defenders anyway are pretty much going to be these safeties which the closer they are to the line of scrimmage the better so we got the fs fire one so same setup really gonna want to align these guys though um but yeah be on the safety once again so that you he can prevent them from running off then pinch your defensive line, slant them inside, guess pass, and keep it contained. This is going to be the look. Hopefully, with some more switch pressure, got to be Johnny on the spot for anybody. I mean, I don't know, I don't know why the running back didn't even see that guy, but you can see how crazy of a blitz that is. It's really the exact same thing as the previous play, where this guy just loops around once again, and he looped around the running back entirely, but. Um, I mean, I guess maybe because it uh, the, the, uh, looks like Brandon Graham has come through the middle there. But this is just your opportunity to use this blitz with cover one man, which is a better coverage. Like I said, got to be on him first so he doesn't go anywhere. I'm not even sure I guess pass on that last one. But, uh, yeah, slant your defensive line uh, inside, although I think I accidentally blitzed all, which is not going to be good. So let's go ahead and let's put him back. I don't even know who Reddick is supposed to be covering. There we go. So yeah, gotta uh, yeah, I did blitz all linebackers. Where are we at here? Gotta fix that. So I got that keep it contain on. Slanted inside. I said, there we got the setup. So boom. Let's go ahead and let's watch this work. Like I said, stay home for a half a second. We got this dude coming around the outside once again. And the running back really isn't seeing him. Even with the blocking running back, it's not, it's not helping. So very glitchy play. Next up, we have the FS Fire 3. So on this play, the safety walks down the line. All I have to do is QB contain and bring this guy down right here on a blitz and drop back post snap. I could also drop down on the center. It really doesn't matter. But you can see the safety loops around uh, every single time. It's not like the, you know, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it uh, it does loop around. We'll go and we'll do that again. Like I said, I, I think it's best if I pinch the defensive line, but then I have to be on the safety so that I can control them and keep them from walking back. And then this is going to be a little bit better. I mean, it really is better to bring him in a little bit more to the QB contain lane. And you'll see how he loops around a little bit faster. So, guessing pass. Like I said, staying here for a second, dropping back. You can see, I mean, I did pick a mesh play. So, there's going to be a lot of underneath throws available. Probably should have picked something a little bit more conducive to a blitz. So, let's do this one more time. Like I said, bring this guy here. Slam my guys inside for a little extra. And before I do that, keep it contained. I'll just help that guy get around the, the outside a little bit better. And you can see we actually get a little bit of a switch pressure that time as um, go to the replay. Because of the looping blitz being so close pre-snap, they did a switch uh, where they just basically tried to push that off and just lets him go inside. And that's why he got that uh, got the pressure the way that he did. You'll get that sometimes. So like I said, beyond the safety, keep it contained. They like said slanting him inside is helpful before doing that keeping contained so standing over this small gap here so try to get back under these drags and he's running for his life and throwing a bad pass so something must have been going on back there but like i said it's a good blitz it's a good coverage it's a cover three match which is one of my favorites one of the better ones in this formation next up we got the cover three lock there's no real setup to this. It's just another unique defense. You have this guy here, man to the running back. You could always change into a hard flat uh, because you have curl flats and you have your matching concept on the other side. It's just a unique defense. Like there's nothing really, um, <laughs> you know, there's nothing really else to it, but you have that free man to do whatever you want. I could always man him to, the, to this guy. I could always man him to the crosser, although it doesn't let me do that this year for some reason. Uh, but yeah, just manning him to just anybody that you feel needs help is really going to be the way 
Next up, out of the 2-3 Sam, we have the DB Fire 2. This play here, I'm typically going to press, and then I'm going to blitz one of these uh, linebackers. Like here, I probably want to blitz this guy, because it'll be easier to pick up that tight end. Uh, I can also spread the defensive line and keep it contained if I want to, but that's not 100% necessary. This is like third and 15. I might do something like that because it would be very susceptible to run plays. Basically, I'm just going to try to pull back a guard, which you can see there work pretty easily, and we get some crazy pressure around the edge. This is a very high... Uh, speed rush, especially if you're going against mobile quarterbacks. This is my go-to defense. If somebody's running a lot and I want to put some pressure on them, they're running with Lamar Jackson or trying, I'm going to use something like this um, as I messed up the uh, replay system there. So, like I said, focusing on me in front of 71, I'm going to just walk him back. And he's he, Once I walk back, he follows me. And you can see off the edge, we have multiple guys coming. The running back picks up one, but by the time we get the sack, you can see 69. Both guards. That's the point of spreading the defensive line. Guards do not rotate very well. They're not very fast. They're, they both end up blocking nobody, which is the point. You're getting a free rusher because all the speed on the outside, those guards are just going to get whooped. Next up, we got the overload three-seam press. We're just going to press, guess pass, and then blitz our linebacker and drop back the exact same way. This is really meant to get somebody off the edge, and you can see this is just another high pressure package. The only real issue when it comes to this play is pressing. Um, you know, you don't have to press. Like, you can just walk this cornerback down and have the exact same success because pressing can be an issue when it comes to the cornerbacks, but they're already kind of in a press. So it's like it's not really the biggest concern. We'll go to the replay real quick just to see how the, the blocking held up. You can see, once again, I drop back, 76 blocks, nobody. Uh, the guard, once again, 69, blocking nobody. This time, though, because of the, the, the offensive line could pick up the pressure, I block back in the right tackles, but not blocking anybody. The running back really is in a precarious situation as he has to take one of these outside cornerbacks or edge rushers. He took the one that he saw first, and then the other one just comes off the blind side and just, just picks him up. So, very good blitz. This is definitely, I mean, you have a cover two, which is not a very good... Um, Coverage, cover three matches a much better coverage. So I definitely prefer this blitz over the cover two this year. Next up, we got the cover three cloud. This is just a good passing uh, formation. If I think it's going to be a run play, I'll pinch the defense and slant them outside. But if I'm just expecting, um, you know, it's not really a run defense. It's really more meant to be a pass defense because it's just really hard for people to hit a one play touchdown against this. There's not a ton of one play touchdowns that are no, that people know that can really take away these plays. And then you can see, I mean, it's just a decent coverage. It's not uh, anything special, but it's a good coverage to throw in if, you're, if your opponent's hitting a lot of big pass plays. It's a good curveball to throw their way. And a lot of times they don't figure out what they can do with it. Next up is Cup for Quarters. All I'm going to do is baseline shield plus baseline to bring the safeties down. I can walk them down even more manually if I want to because the closer they are to the line of scrimmage, the more effective it will be. I'll also put my hard flats or my outside uh, curl flats to hard flats because this is going to give me the best run defense in the formation and it'll still be a pretty good pass defense too. As you can see, there's, there's nothing really anywhere you can go there. So this is something that you should always have in your audibles. You can pinch the defensive line too if you're expecting anything uh, severe, you know, an inside run of any kind. Like here, if it's going to be an inside run, it's going to be, uh, you know, if it's going to be a run, it's probably going to be an inside zone. And sure enough, it was. I can shoot that gap one more time. And you can see that we just have a very good run defense, whether it's an inside or outside run. You also have a lot of DBs on the field, so it's going to be a very good pass defense as well. Here, I didn't even get the setup in, but you can see it's still really aligned very well as we get another stop. Next up out of the dime normal, we have the DB Blitz Zero. This play here, I'm just going to pinch the defensive line, and then I'm going to also uh, slant them outside, which is D-pad to the left and down, and D-pad to the left and up on the right stick. Then I'm going to press everybody. I'm going to press these corners. I can motion. I can put these guys where they belong to, just line them up right in front of their defending targets, or their targets. And uh, just, you know, a lot of times I'll bring this guy down, put them uh, in one of these gaps, so they really don't have to because the pressure is going to come in so fast anyway. And then I'm also going to guess pass, and then i got to cover this running back, but it doesn't really matter because the point of this play is the pressure comes in so fast. Uh, it's a really good run defense too, which I'll probably go over here in a minute, but you can see these cornerbacks just come sprinting off the edge, and if they don't get like this one on the right, on the left side here kind of got caught up, but if they don't get caught up, they're just going to come right in and just nail the quarterback every single time.
It's actually a pretty good run defense, too. I'm going to pick, like, random play. So this is one of the better base defenses. It's the reason I'm recording this book. I'm going to do the exact same setup, hoping to get some run plays. I'd really like this cornerback to be in further um, at the end of the day. Like, even if it's not hidden, like, it doesn't matter because your opponent won't be able to do anything about it. So, like I said, we're going to do this again. I'm hoping to get some run plays. If it's an inside run play, like this appears that it's going to be, or it was looking like it was going to be as we get the, sack, uh, the pressure again. If it's an inside run play, typically these defensive linemen do a really good job of stuffing the inside lanes, and then these splits and corners do a really good job of stuffing the outside lanes. So I'm doing this one more time. Heavy pressure package. Looks like we're going to have a jet sweep of some kind. So that I'm going to pretty much... I mean, it's still, you can see, there aren't any inside or outside run lanes is the point. And like I said, this is really just one of the best base defenses, and it's the reason I'm calling this. You don't get weak box because you have... A good um, you know good amounts of um, defensive linemen so even like there they have like a two tight end set I'm not getting bulldozed because I still have the guys I need to stop you know plays like this I'll do this one more time I said I like to you know if it's something like this I can stand back because if it's a run play I don't know what it's gonna be but if it's a run play I can shoot the gap if it's not a run play like there you can shoot the gap also although there obviously would have been better to cover the running back but that is an option shooting the gap if you have a faster linebacker than I have because TJ Edwards is only like a low 80 speed linebacker you can always do that make sure you always align these guys though and I don't know what's going on out here this is something I guess they're doing because there's nobody so I guess I could just use your head but Let's go ahead and let's get this, um, you know, shut this run play down. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, it's a good defense. Good defense everywhere. Good run defense, good pass defense. Next up, we got the Dime Blitz 3. We're going to pinch defense again, press, and then slant outside. After that, um, it's really, you know, I could just basically bring this user down over this gap pre-snap, but it's going to be hard to get back on that that bunch, which is going to be our responsibility. Really just the inside pass plays is going to be the responsibility. And you can see we get some decent pressure, but we also get um, some good coverage. So it's a good play to mix in if you want to get away from the uh, the DB fire, um, you know, the DB, uh, DB all-out man blitz, because we're about to get an inside handoff here. You can see the blitzing cornerback even comes around and stops that play. So it's just a good alternate play to use in the scheme, but it's probably like third down the line as far as best plays go in this formation. Next up, we have the cover four drop contain. This is the best run defense in the formation. I find it's best just to uh, pinch the defense, which is RB, R1 down the left stick, and then manually bring it down the safety. That's about it. If I expect a possible run play, like say I'm in a single, going against a single back or something, which I don't necessarily suggest because these are small defensive packages, but if you do, you can just hard flat these guys to try to help with outside runs, set the coaching adjustments to zero, stuff like that, five or zero. This is there. I mean, that hard flat definitely helped me out. Like I said, we're not going to get a lot of pressure. It's not really a pressure defense. It's a, it's really, you know, meant to be a prevent defense, and it's also meant to be a run defense. That's why I'm bringing these safeties down, because th this is really to help the run plays. I don't know if I'll actually get any run plays. We'll find out. Because like I said, I did hit random, but if I don't get a run play pretty soon, I might have to actually switch it up. You see those hard flats are really killing as we actually get a coverage sack there. Um, like I said, to me, hard flats is one of the better ways to go. Especially since, uh, you know, I'm trying to stop um, run plays at the end of the day. But it's doing pretty good with the pass plays as well. Here we go. We finally get inside zone. You see the safety filled the hole, but for some reason didn't actually tackle him. But I will go to the replay just to show that because I really thought the safety was going to make the play there. I don't know what happened there. Uh, that, that looked like a glitch in the program or something. But you can see they walked down. If you don't guess pass, they walked down the box. So he walked right down to make a play, but I guess he didn't want to take that heat because he just passed on it. Like, that's total BS. But that's why this is the best run defense because these safeties will walk down and fill these lanes. This is just a good match coverage that if you zone all the linebackers, you typically get a pretty good um, you know, pass defense over the middle. So if you struggle with pass defense over the middle, this will flood that. You can always pinch a defensive line if you're expecting a run play. Uh, but this is something that, like I said, if somebody's throwing over the middle a lot, you can throw this out there, and it's going to clog up a lot of lanes. You can see the only thing that got open there was a drag, which was like a, a, a zero-yard drag. Um, you can always change your, your flats uh, to whatever you want them to be. Uh, but here, like I said, this is probably going to be a pass play, and we'll probably get crushed. This is not a very good, I'm sorry, run play we're going to get crushed, because this is not a very good run defense. But you can see we still shot the gap, so it does have possibilities to stop inside runs, but ultimately this is not something you're going to want to call uh, as we're getting another run defense. 
go ahead and I'll do this again. If it's an inside run, maybe I could shoot it again because you know you do have at least a lot there to stop that inside run, and then boom, I, I didn't even make my adjustment or else I probably would have took that away. So yeah, this would pretty much be the setup I would say. Go ahead and uh, is it man align or zone align, whatever, just to get that guy back. But this is pretty much gonna be the look. And we'll just hopefully get a get a pass play here because I picked random. But we'll definitely get a pass play here. So like I said, I'll stay on my user here, take my side. I said nothing's really open over the middle there. Just as long as you cover underneath. All the deep stuff is pretty much gonna be covered. Except we got the max sting three. So we're just gonna press. That's all we really gotta do. Press. I'd say it's best to put Cox here on a blitz and then just come down over this gap with the user linebacker and pretty much just attack it that way. You could spread the defense, you could put them on QB contains, all that stuff's optional. But at the end of the day, these are really just meant to get around this edge here. As you can see, the cornerback barely got picked up by the running back there. It would have been an instant sack on the play action. Like I said, we'll do the full QB contain, spread the D look, so that maybe we can get around that. I said, I'm, I'm doing it a couple times, but the more widespread those outside rushers are, the quicker these cornerbacks can get past, as you can see right there. They get tackled as he threw it away, but the, the pressure is very instant. So one more time, like I said, for some reason, these guys are not spreading on the defensive line sometimes, but it doesn't really matter. It's still going to have a lot of success. So we're we'll going press and release again and you can see that play action I don't know why that cornerback can't make a tackle because that looks like an instant replay but it was a different snap next up we got the spinner this player you just want to press everybody that's all you really want to do and you can see how you're really going to have a lot of opportunities when it comes to the blitz and corners I just have to really peel off and you know cover that running back depending on what he does right there you can see the running back it almost gets past the play action as you can see we're getting a blitz in super fast so let's watch the replay. It almost got past the play action running back, but the running back did get back around to make the block. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because this cornerback is coming off the edge too. Although that's partially because he got let go by a check and release. So you can pick this up by blocking enough to pick this up, but most people won't do that and you'll get a lot of easy pressure that way. You don't really have to make any adjustments other than pressing though, to be honest with you. And then typically I'll take one of these linebackers and user them over the running back gap because I do have to peel off and get to the running back if he goes out on a route. But you can see, you get some hay gap pressure, you get some side pressure, you get pressure just about anywhere. Except we got the strong eagle slant three. So I'm just gonna basically shift my defense to the right, which is the RBR one button and then right on the left stick. Then I'm gonna blitz my user, although I'll be honest with you, I could've just stayed down there if I was already controlling him. And put him on a uh, blitz, hover this gap. Sometimes I'll put my guys in QB contained, sometimes it's helpful, but I'm just gonna stay over this gap and then drop back pre-snap, or post-snap rather over the middle of the field you can see how you can get a lot of pressure either from the straight a gap or from the outside here we go once again you can see for whatever reason it's mostly because of the a gap that the tackle just doesn't know who to take and the running back picks that up but it's just a very confusing blitz because like i said it's a very um you know with all this speed on the field a lot of times the lineman can't handle it go ahead and i'll do that again like i said it's going to hover this gap here I'm not, I didn't keep it contained this time, which like I said, that's definitely, you know, didn't really change the results. This kind of slowed down a little bit. I did notice it did a little bit quicker with the QB contain. I'm going to go one step further and also slant in inside here. And we're going to get a slightly different look. As you can see now, the other guy comes off the side. So it's like, there's, there's definitely a lot of different ways to get pressure here. Go to the replay one more time. I said that slant inside just got around the running back. I mean, even the cornerback was coming in again. So a very good blitz. Like I said, this looping, this looping reaction is what causes the cornerback to get switched off from the left tackle a lot of times and get that inside leverage. So one more time. I don't know if I've been guessing pass or if I mentioned that, but I do that every single time. Slant inside one more time just to get that... Uh, but I do feel like that's getting a little bit better pressure. Is that slant inside? Although there it gets chopped up. But like I said, that cornerback's getting around every single time regardless. So it's uh, some, somebody's getting in there pretty much every single time. Next up, we got the cover three cloud. This is just a good defense to mix in. There's really no setup. A lot of times I'll try to bring this guy down uh, just to try to help out on the offensive line. 
Uh, but it really doesn't do too much because I'm really just trying to drop back into coverage. Cover three clouds, just a good defense. It's something to mix in that will give your opponent a lot of problems. It's hard to hit a one-play touchdown against it because of what this safety back here is doing. Uh, it's not like your typical cover three. He's kind of in like a cover two. So this has always been one of my favorite formations because the coverage is so unique and a lot of people don't know how to deal with it. Next up, we have the cover four quarters. It's going to be your best run defense in the formation, just baseline, show blitz, baseline like we've been doing. That's really just to bring these safeties down and bring them into play more when it comes to uh, any potential run plays. So, you know, this is best, like if you're in a shotgun look like this, you can really use this to shut down these inside zones. So this is a one, I mean, cover four is a pretty good pass defense this year as well. But at the end of the day, this is really just here because I want to have something that's uh, my best run defense in this formation. That's going to be this particular play. Next up, we have the Overstorm Brave. It's a good zero blitz. Um, just, you know, I'm going to use or whoever's on the running back and typically just align everybody. And I don't know what happened there, but you can see uh, <laughs> that was weird. It looked like it was on like fast, like fast motion. I don't know what happened there, but it kind of, I don't know if the game kind of glitched, but you can see how quickly these guys get in. The running back can't pick everybody up. Um, it's just a good, uh, I mean, the, the, the tackle ended up blocking, no, or the uh, the center ended up blocking nobody, which is kind of weird. But uh, you can see, this is a very good blitz. Man zero blitzes are very overpowered right now in Man 23. Next up, we have the cover four show two. This is the best run defense in this formation. I don't recommend necessarily running it against something like this, but this is going to be your best option for run defense. So we're going to baseline show blitz baseline. You're going to see how the cornerbacks drop back. Uh, typically, I want this cornerback down. Like if he's not, there's nobody over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to play him down, although I won't do a ton. I like to bring these guys down too. To me, they're a little bit far back. I want them down like linebackers because they're gonna play the run like linebackers. Then I'm gonna shift towards, um, you know, just shift in the direction of what I'm expecting the run to be. Although here it's kind of difficult because the, um, you know, there really is no uh, real giveaway here. Then typically I'm either gonna shoot that gap right in front of me, so I'm gonna kind of stay off to the left a little bit or I'm just gonna chase the play wherever it is. Like right here, that's definitely an outside run. You can see everything's shut down. There's nowhere to go. Uh, the safeties fill the holes. Let's go, let's go to the replay to see what happened there. Like I said, these safeties will run commit essentially. Um, well, not really run commit, but they, they play their run very well. Like they drop down. Like see here, the outside hard flat is really what covered that. That's why a hard flat said to zero. Because this guy here, if I can highlight him, let's get this brings back up. If I can highlight him, he, he goes, he looks like he's going out as if he's expecting a play for a second but then he just basically loops back around he's just shutting that down and then like i said the safety which i brought down in the box is doing a very good job of filling these holes as well as he comes in to finish off the pile next up we got the mike blitz zero this play i like to just spread it sometimes especially if i'm trying to pass rush also finds best sometimes to move this linebacker over towards the gap that he's going um, which it doesn't really matter because to be honest with you, like I'm going to come down this gap. Like I got to use it the running back. I like coming down like this, kind of having like a five, uh, two look or like a good run defense look. And then you can see we can get pressure because once again, men's or blitzes are very successful. Um, I just have to drop back on the running back, which there the running back was actually on a pass block. You could also do the blitz setup where you just basically come down over this gap. This typically will work better if the running back's not blocking, but we'll give it a try. As you can see, I just have to stay down here for half a second before dropping back. And sometimes you'll get a free rusher, but like I said, the running back blocking is going to make that a little bit of an issue. If the running back's not blocking, though, he would have got right in, which is typically when you want to use that. Other than that, you could also slide the defense like this. And you can shoot gaps with this setup here. Like I could, you know, try, but once again, the blocking running back is not going to be conducive to that working. But if the running back is not working, a lot of times you can shoot gaps on that. And then last but not least, like I said, I could just set this up like this, drop back, use the, uh, use the running back again. Whatever the play hikes here, like I said, I, I can get an A gap that way too. You know, it's just an overload of pressure when it comes to blitzers. Next up, we have the OLB Blitz 1. Like I said, man coverage this year is, uh, man cover one especially is a very good coverage. That's why I'm trying to add a lot of man coverage defenses. But in reality, um, this is not one of my favorite defenses to run, but it's it's very popular. So I'm just going to do the same setup. I man align this guy here. That's going to be one of those important things. I want him to be right in front of him. Then I'm just going to basically shift towards the potential 
um, you know, whatever direction the running back could possibly go in a in a um, an inside zone run because that's the most popular in shotgun. Then I'm going to blitz my user, guess pass. I can bring him down over this gap here, or I can bring him down over this gap here. Typically, I want to mirror the running back. I want to give him the same type of respect that I gave the tight end. I want to have, I want to be right in front of him because that's going to be my responsibility after the play. My goal is just to try to pull alignment so I can get a free rusher. There, it didn't work out. Typically, being in the middle is going to be best for that. As you can see, we get mossed on that play, but the coverage was there. I just didn't make a good play. Uh, like I said, it's really going to be best to be um, to be here in the middle to try to get the blitz off, but then it really gives me. This is why I don't really run cover on defense. This is not really my style, but it's going to be best to be here so I can try to get one of the blitzers off the edge free. And then though, if the running back goes out on a straight table route, it's going to be a problem. You can see there we get a throwaway. Um, this is a, you know it's a good defense cover one is a good defense, which is why I'm trying to include this. Next up out of the 3-3 Cub, we have the Sam Will Blitz 3. This play here can be used for just about anything. There's multiple setups you can do with this. I'm gonna start off with the Blitz though. I'm gonna basically, whatever, if I ever suspect a possible inside zone, I'm going to shift my defense with the R1, RB button to the uh, to the right, which is going to be left stick to the right. Then I'm going to, I mean, that's that's you know, I can I could do that. I'm also going to, like I said, I'm going to blitz here. So I'm going to put my guy on a blitz and bring him down right over the center, and then I'm going to guess pass. This is pretty much going to be the look. I have to drop back on that tight end pretty quick though. That's going to be the only downside. You can see I didn't stay home long, and we do get some pressure. It's not the best blitz. There's way better blitzes out there, but this is something you can blitz from. You don't even have to really do the shift. I mean, you could always just spread your linebackers, which is D-pad to the left and up on the left stick. You could spread your linebackers the same way and try to get them out there. If you do that, this is another scenario where all you have to do is come down over the guard. This is going to be a little bit easier, as you're going to see here. Um, you know, now I can get to the tight end a little bit faster. Last time I got to the tight end easily enough, but here I can get on that, you know, basically get a free guy, which is chip off on that guard and get that free rusher. So if we go to the replay here, you can see, I, I basically just press, release, try to cut, undercut that tight end. Like I said, that's something, if I can get him to uh, acknowledge me without actually touching him, it's best. But sometimes, I, you know, like there I got touched. And 76 could not rotate over quick enough. The uh, the running back is blocking too, although it looks like he's, he's midway through his check and release route. Uh, but ultimately, you know, that's gonna be your, your best blitz in this formation. Now, it's a really good pass defense too. I don't always use it as a blitz. Sometimes I'll just basically zone all linebackers, which this year only zones this guy. They have a defensive lineman assignment here. So zoning all only brings him up, which is fine. At the end of the day, it's really best to just manually uh, do it anyway. So D-pad to the right twice will bring up your linebacker adjustment. A lot of times I'll just put him on a hard flat and give myself a little Mabel concept. Sometimes, I'll, and if you hit D-pad to the left twice, you can bring up that other guy, your other defensive end, and put him on a hook. So on a look like this, because I have a running back on that side and like a table route's more prevalent, I'll either double Mabel or I'll do, um, this is a little bit more, a little bit better to me, do a hook vert, uh, vert hook, I mean, where there's three receivers. So that'll give me a little bit more freedom. That'll limit me to just covering this area over here a little bit more, or just free roaming. So if like those routes just go straight back, um, you know, this is something where I, I can free roam because there's nothing really over here. So like I said, I'm not 100% sure of the play. Like it, it's, I just kind of picked one, but it'll give me the opportunity to take these deep routes. You can see nothing's really open here. I'm basically just shutting everything down. Quarterback's about to float it up for an easy interception, although instead it was just an incomplete pass. But you can see how this setup or this particular defense is easily adjustable to shut down just about any offense. So like I said, anytime I have, um, you know, a, a bunch of receivers over there, I'm going to do the vert hook. The three rec is actually a better um, a better covering zone, so I could leave that alone. I could use the vert hook and, and still do my own thing. There's a lot of different options. Like I said, the running back. So I could take away any, any, you know, I could put him, I could put everybody, if, I, if it's like a third and 10, I'll put everybody on vert hooks. I'll just do it just like this and give up that underneath running back. And then I'll just, you know, cloud cover the middle with multiple zones. So a very highly adjustable play. I would say if you're, if you like to, I don't typically, cause this is a cover three match. Cover three match is way better than like a regular cover three. Like if I go over the top, you can see it goes from a seam flat to a curl flat. 
curl flats are way worse. So to me, the seam flat is better. That's a matching uh, cover three. They'll cover way better. So I typically don't like the over the top coverage. I typically don't like to change that. That's a very good uh, setup. So this is pretty much the play, uh, pretty much the pass defense and the blitz. Next up, we got the Tampa two. Cover two sink doesn't seem to exist anymore. Uh, which is okay. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, Tampa 2 is its best replacement. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to shift my defense to the right. That's RBR1. Then the left, or sorry, right on the left stick. Then I'm going to blitz the uh, the X route here manually. And I'm going to blitz myself and guess pass. This is going to be the best way that I could get um, some a free rusher. We do have the vert hook. The vert hook should always be on the accent side. Whatever side has the most receivers. Uh, and that's what I have right now. So we're just going to press this guy here, then walk away. You can see the running back gets knocked over, even though it's supposed to go on a route, I think. And we get uh, we get good pressure. It's a good pressure play. Go and do that again. Like I said, it's not... Um, I thought I blitzed this guy. It didn't work out. But, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, this, this, this play was definitely nerfed. Last year was way better. Uh, a couple plays in this formation were way better. Um, but you can see we can get pressures right there because I, I chipped off. Although this, I don't even have my fastest outside linebackers, which is typically what I want to have. I, I thought that I had him here, but since he's, this is a defensive end as far as they're concerned uh, for this play now. But ultimately, you can see, I mean, I press, I pull the guard in, and then the, the outside line or the defensive end here just gets right around the edge. And he also gets around the running back. The running back's blocking. So two guys, once again, it's a four, it's a five man pressure, six blockers. And we have one guy, we have two guys blocking nobody at the end of the play. Next up, we got the LB Blitz 1. So this is just a cover one version of the loop blitz. I'm going to pinch the defense, or pinch the defensive line, spread the linebackers. You can walk them into these QB contain lanes. It's going to be helpful. Then I'm going to put this dude on a blitz, and I'm going to use the running back after the snap. Just basically drop down over this gap. Whatever route the running back goes on, i got to take them. And you can see the reason I'm trying to work this into this package is because cover one's one of the best man coverages when it comes to defense comes to defense so i'll go and i'll do that again you don't have to uh, get these guys in the qb contain lanes you can leave them out and they're still going to rush at a good angle so let's go let's do that one more time and we're basically getting that pressure right up the middle there which is definitely unique that's a switch pressure result once again let's go to the replay like i said you'll see how the switch pressure just basically passes them off and just lets them right in I mean, that's really that's really the point of this type of blitz and having these guys rush inside. So let's go and let's do that again. Set so QB contain. You don't really want these guys in that lane, though. You really don't want them in that, uh, that, that um, you know, let's have them come in by themselves. I don't really want them on that QB contain lane. So let's go and let's leave them out. And wait for the ball to hike here. Like I said, got to cover my guy. And boom, we get another A gap because of that switch concept that really doesn't work too good it's not really an a gap it's more a b gap but you can see once again they just let him in free so gotta keep your contain on we do it one more time i said those delayed linebackers really just have a, a unique effect as we get another sack so the running back definitely got to be blocking to pick that up next up we got the cover four drop so we're just going to hit Y triangle every time before we do our next adjustment. We're going to baseline show blitz baseline. It's going to be right on the right stick, left on the right stick, and then right on the right stick again. Like I said, that's the that's the setup. If you're expecting an inside handoff, you can pinch the uh, defensive line. Sometimes I'll spread the linebackers to take away outside lanes and hard flat. And this will be pretty much the run defense, or at least the best run defense that I can put together in this formation. As you can see, the first play is inside handoff, and my opponent gets nothing. If it's an outside handoff, like I said, the same setup works the same way. You can set your hard flats to zero, give them a little bit of an advantage when it comes to getting outside, but you can see this is one of the better run defenses in the entire game, especially when it comes to these type of packages. Next step out of the 3-3 nickel, we have the linebacker blitz zero. This is the meta loop blitz that they tried to patch. All I'm going to do is pinch the uh, the linebackers, which D-pad to the left and D-pad down. Then I'm going to QB contain, guess pass, and then bring my user down just a little bit over here, down behind the, the tackle. This is pretty much how everybody's doing it. This is one of the meta blitzes. You can see typically these guys loop around. Um, the only thing that can really, I mean, you can press to try to take away these short throws. Like if you have time, you can try to walk these guys down. The running back's not that important uh, in reality because that's probably going to be my first responsibility. So this will help to take away uh, some of these. And you can see the loop comes around. But you, this will help to take away some of these short routes. As you can see, that time the quarterback had nowhere to go. 
We're going to watch the replay. Like I said, you've probably seen this online a million times. The linebackers typically bloop all the way around and just get pressure. It's pretty much guaranteed pressure. Even the one that got picked up eventually was coming around the block here. You can see it picked up by a, by, a, by a running back too. But a lot of times you'll see both of these guys flip around. Except we got the nickel blitz three. This play here I typically like to pinch the defense. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm going to guess pass, put my user on a blitz, and then QB contain one more time. The difference between pinching this defense and pressing is the cornerbacks won't get caught up the same way. So I could always come over one of these uh, guards, but it's always best just to do it the furthest from the blitzing quarterback possible, and then just stay home for a second before you drop back. And you can see we just get crazy pressure from like multiple people. The cornerback doesn't necessarily take the best angle because you can see it causes the switch pressure, which is the linemen try to pass guys off and to a point where it just basically lets them all free. You can see the whole right side of the line, the center, the guard, and the tackle, all are trying to switch and it's just to the point where it doesn't work because they try to switch too much and it just lets these guys come in free. So a very good switch pressure blitz. Go ahead, I'll do that again. Like I said, just come down away from all that. Try to stay home, press and release. And you can see this time the cornerback just comes straight in. So cover three is a better coverage than cover two. And you can see how you can get pressure in multiple ways. Next up, we got the Tampa 2. To set up this blitz, just pinch the defensive line, QB contain, blitz, uh, and then blitz both these linebackers, really, because you need an additional blitzer. This is pretty much going to be the setup here. Hover this gap here and then drop back post snap. It's going to get the cornerback right off the edge there. And you can see we actually got two guys, the linebacker and the cornerback, both got off the edge on both sides. Although I do think the cornerback actually got caught up a little bit. So you can see the cornerback here, like I said, he just kind of runs into the, the, the tackle's leg. He didn't really get blocked at all. And then this guy here just kind of loops around. It's the same principles as the loop blitz. You're just doing it out of a cover two with different players. Next up, we got the cover one thief. And we're going to go with um, the, the bench. It's a good pass play. We're going to pinch the entire defense, which is RB, R1 down on the left stick. Then we're going to bring our blitzing safety here down. And we're going to... You know, just lean back here, put him on a QB contain, put him on a blitz, and then put him in the QB contain lane. Then we're going to bring our user down here and guess pass. And we try to pull this line in the back, and then you can see how nobody, or we eventually get a looper there, but might have brought him in a little too close to the line. So bring him down, QB contain, get him in that QB contain lane, and we're in a good spot. So let's do it one more time. Pinch the defensive line. Stay home for a half a second before dropping back on the running back. You can see the pressure loops in, but like I said, it's it's not the fastest blitz. It's very consistent, but it gives you an opportunity to run cover one man in this particular package because this is, you know, cover one man's a very good defense. So let's do that one more time. Like I said, I just got to drop on this running back here. It got flattened, and we give away a lane, but he just throws it away. Let's do that one more time. Said the hardest part is just bringing Epps down. And now it won't let me. Now it won't let me get off of this guy. And there we go. Controller dying and all kind of stuff. Still worked out. And then when we get that loop coming in over the center this time, coming up the middles, we get a really easy sack. Which sometimes can happen that way. Sometimes they'll just they'll switch like that, and then you'll see. I mean, even if we were ran outside, the switch would have still worked on the outside too. Next up, we're going to do the under smoke. Just going to press, pinch the defensive line, QB contain, guess pass. I got the uh, the running backs. Um, not even my responsibility from the looks of this, so I can really just drop back and use her however I want to use her. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're just going to stay on for a second. You can see we got guys coming from all over the world. And uh, he threw a bomb up, but it wasn't, you know, the pressure was coming in too quick. So, like I said, pinch the defense. Keep it contained. Guess pass. Bring your blitz user down over here. Like I said, everybody's got a responsibility. And as long as we stay on that for a spot for a second, even, even with a pass blocking running back, you can see there's just they're just wreaking havoc out here. And the coverage is tight. The coverage is good. So we got good coverage all over the place. Now, you could always user the guy on the running back too and just leave this as the, you know, leave the blitz as it is. Like I said, now I just have to cover the running back if he goes out on a pattern. 
This is off, also an option. Now you can see we get crazy pressure once again. If I had faster linebacker, he probably would have been sacked instantly. So this is definitely a good blitz to use in this formation. Decent run defense too. But I will choose some run plays. Go over to concept. Like I said, this is something that um, I could use with this guy who right now has some weird, uh, you know, whatever. Um, thing on him because I guess he's not really being, you know, whatever he's going to be. But yeah, you see right there, like I said, it's a good run defense. Takes up takes up a lot of inside lanes. You're not getting bulldozed the way that you probably should be. Got a couple free defenders once again here. Not really sure why it does that, but um, you know, they're in, they're in uh they're in good uh, good run fits as you can see right there. They shut off that outside run. So I'm just basically pinching the entire defense at this point. On this play, I'll use the guys on the running back. And we can see how we can just, you know, we're just shooting gaps here from all over the place. As this is one of the better defenses out there. It's super fast, super glitchy. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I'm always going to use the guy on the running back, even though it's Darius Slay. One of my best corners. And you can see we can shoot gaps there too. Because obviously, I uh, put random run play. So I know it's going to be runs. But if you know your opponent's gonna run, by all means. So there we go one more time. Like I said, you wanna make sure this guy's aligned though. Aligned in front of that tight end. You don't wanna give an inside release or anything like that. And that was actually the best run. It was an outside run, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a, that's probably where it's gonna be weakest is to the outside because the cornerbacks drop back. But if you have it like here, where you have that, um, that extra defender outside in the uh, QB contain, He's actually going to drop down that run very good. You can see he drops down there. He didn't, didn't make the tackle, and then I missed on mine, but you can see he cuts off the play. So when those when those things come up, they're actually really helpful as far as the outside run defense. Like right here, this is going to be, you know, he's going he's gonna to cut that off outside and make him work back inside, making it a good defense. Was that a fumble? It looked like a fumble animation. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.